My name is Hakan Kara Osman. I'm a social scientist working at University College Dublin, and I am looking at um, environmental and social justice to understand how we can ensure we are transitioning to a better future. I am so thrilled to be here because today is a very important moment for us. This is a very peculiar moment because climate crisis and social crisis happen at the same time. Therefore, we need a transformational and radical and inclusive change. Time is up. We need each other to stand up and to chime for inclusive change. Again, climate crisis is real. Social inequalities are real problems. So we need to create a new paradigm to make sure justice takes place for everyone. Now let's go to the fashion chapter. Let's talk about fashion. Fashion once upon a time was a dream. But now it is becoming a nightmare and I would like to explain and walk you through why. Because fashion is a rapacious industry. We have long, dispersed, fragmented and opaque supply chains. But the problem is fashion is one of the few industries that is really dependent upon human and labor force. The majority of workers are women, but in the fashion supply chains, there is no democracy. We are still not ensuring representation across fashion supply chains. So we don't protect and we don't bring justice to workers that make this industry so profitable. I'm a social scientist and I look at fashion supply chains for more than eight years now. And I can tell you one thing, democracy doesn't take place in fashion supply chains and we have inherent contradictions and systemic problems. Power is an important construct, and I want to bring your attention to the power use. Fashion is one of the few industries which is so powerful, but power is not distributed evenly. Brands are so powerful, but the players, workers, and supply chain members that make this industry so powerful are not empowered. And lack of transparency is one of the most important and monumental problems we still don't understand what happens behind the scenes. So behind the runway is where we want to actually bring the spotlight on. We need to understand what happens across fashion supply chains. But today I want to talk about the one of the root causes, one of the elephants in the room, overproduction and overconsumption. And I can tell you the majority of severe environmental and social problems are located at lower tier supply chains. So even though brands claim they don't get involved in social or environmental problems, they are indirectly linked with injustice issues. So this is our problem altogether and we need holistic solutions. Insurmountable problems in terms of environmental and social injustice are exacerbated for lower tier suppliers and workers. But the fashion industry doesn't seem to understand some important lessons. Number one, sustainability is not a static practice. It is a dynamic concept. It evolves over time. We need a very robust and holistic strategy and vision to make it happen and to implement certain practices. Number two, top-down approaches don't work. We need to make sure people, workers, everyone in this industry are in the center. Unless we ensure inclusion and diversity and representation, we cannot change the paradigm. So we don't wanna see commitments or pledges. We just wanna see robust actions and evidence. Top-down approaches don't help who suffer at the bottom. We need to make sure bottom is empowered to make this systemic change even. And another problem that we are seeing today, sustainability circularity, transparency. These are buzzwords, but these are not the end themselves. These are the means to reach a better future. So we really need to make sure we understand what we are talking about. We are trying to really cultivate a path to transition to a better future. So I just wanna bring your attention to these actions because at this moment, incremental actions or business as usual with equal efficiency are not the options we need. We need scientific, robust and inclusive actions to bring the change to the systemic level. And lastly, I wanna bring your attention to the policies and regulations. These are mandatory and fundamental, but they are not enough. Of course, we need transformative policies, but at the same time, we need responsible business practices. 
and conscious consumption patterns. So we know systemic problems are so difficult, but we need to aware we need to be aware that these issues must be recognized as universal problems. And we all together, consumers, civil society, and the sector all together, we must join forces to be part of the solution because time is up. We need to create a new paradigm. And lastly, I want to tell you one important new concept, degrowth. We need to make sure degrowth will be a paradigm to make sure justice takes place. Degrowth is not about jeopardizing GDP or destroying the financial growth. It is about bringing environmental and social justice into the principal stage. So we are trying to ensure people will be in the center to make sure this transition will be just and inclusive. inclusive. And lastly, I want to remind you some important facts. And inclusive social dialogue is so important. But at the same time, decentralized power is what we need to achieve. Therefore, decision making and power use should be completely equal for people. Therefore, we need to ensure representation and inclusion take place. And here, I want to go back to the fashion, just to remind you of an important thing. Fashion has lost its function. But now there is this moment emerging for us to ask the question, why do we need fashion? And how we can really build a new relationship with fashion, with the clothing and with the nature. Fashion has been using natural, social and creative resources so destructively, but now time is up. We need to create a new fashion paradigm to make sure we are using this as an instrument for social and environmental change. Um, but I was wondering how valuable actually is our purchasing power. And if we think about practical steps we can take today to support you, uh, you know, whether it be like shopping at thrift shops or whether it be um, getting involved in fashion revolution, how can we do that? I think one of the main problems is, is really, we are not aware that uh, our purchasing power is really important and really monumental for the industry. But again, the industry at the moment is so rapacious just wanting us to consume more and more. But along the way, we lost the demand and supply forecasting side. So in the universities, we try to teach supply chain planning, but when the industry is operating with just this financial growth model, they just jeopardize everything, including creative, social, and natural resources. And yes, going back to waste, because of this lack of integration between designers and supply chain stages. At the end, we have a tremendous amount of waste that is actually destroyed. And I also saw Matteo wrote it. Yes, it is a very common practice from luxury high end to fast fashion. We are dealing with waste. Okay, I just need to tell you, we are now seeing some numbers, though they should be double checked because we also have a very dangerous space at the moment about the numbers and data and everything but more or less five to six percent of the global solid waste is coming from the fashion industry including consumer waste also pre-consumer waste why is this big industry not able to really put a solution to actually use fashion design as a proper tool to create less waste. So we really need to think about circularity, but not as a buzzword, as a discipline, as a paradigm, as a mindset. So we just need to start approaching sustainability vision along this way by changing the way we design and we really produce things. So there's a big mismatch between production planning, fashion design and consumption. And if we can really want to make this transition, we need to integrate all of these bundles by putting people in the center. So waste is a huge problem. Consumers are responsible, but everyone is equally responsible. So I think time is up for us to wait for someone else to come to rescue us, but we are in this together. We just need to really rise up from the ashes and we just need to change the system itself. And also about the legislations, I also saw another comment about the label. I'm starting jump, jumping from the, the chat box to another, but it was actually quite interesting about the labels. And I will tell you one thing, labels are important, but robust methodologies and scientific approaches don't take place. So now regulations are trying to put some labels, but I just want to remind you something, don't believe in everything you see. 
we really need to ensure objective, scientific and independent institutions are behind those methodologies, not brand driven associations or foundations. They just create, they just uh, try to create this vicious circle by promoting some other things with incremental actions or with small equal efficiency. Just to remind you one important thing, we need transparency and evidence to make sure all of these stages are interlinked and we are actually creating the system together. We've talked about this um, need to have this shift in the fashion paradigm and we've talked about all these different aspects of the industry and just sort of bringing it all together. What would the perfect industry look like to you? And maybe like what would be the one, two, like, biggest ways to get there. <laughs> Although of course it's incredibly complex. We absolutely need a justice driven system that puts people in the center for which we need inclusion at all levels. We need to make sure people and workers are really represented and actually empowered for which shorter supply chains emerge as a great potential to deal with many problems because when you have smaller and shorter supply chains, you actually can control things in a much better way with transparency. So we really need to also shuffle the logic of supply chain planning and production system design. It is quite important. But at the same time, there's a constant clash between short-term goals and long-term objectives. Sustainability is not a destination, it is a journey. So there will be constant clashes between long-term goals and short-term gains. We need to make sure what we are creating is a paradigm shift to build a better future. Of course, there will be tensions, but we need to make this just and safe space to make sure actually people are represented and empowered. Lastly, I want to underline the importance of education. Please keep on reading. Please keep on listening. Please keep on questioning. We need you, we need you guys. We need to create this as a social dialogue. Now we need to make sure we all are equals and each voice counts. Again, top-down approaches don't work. We need a very hybrid approach between bottom-up and top-down. So each voice counts and we need responsible research and responsible education to make sure we are creating this language altogether.